Hey guys, welcome back to the BMAP tip series. My name is Ali and in this video we're going to be talking about section 3. Everyone gets worried about section 3 because it's, it's billed as this writing task, this essay that you have to write. Um, but I, I personally thought section 3 was probably the easiest part of the BMAT and in this video I'm just going to be explaining the tips and tactics on how to do well in section 3 and how to prepare for it. Firstly, I'm going to talk about space and scoring, the two S's, and then we're going to go on to talk about some tactics that you can use to prepare for section 3 and on the day of the exam to maximise your score in section 3. Firstly, let's talk about space. You really don't have much space to write on. This is what the answer sheet looks like. As you'll see, it's pretty much an A4 page, but the top quarter of it is taken up with your name and candidate number. So really, all you have to write on are three quarters of a side of A4, and it's not even a full side of A4 because they've got that border around the edges which you're not allowed to write outside of. So, what we always recommend is that instead of thinking of section 3 as, as like a, an essay, instead think of it as just writing three paragraphs because really you only have room to write three or four paragraphs in that small box that they give you. And I think thinking about it as writing a few paragraphs makes it much more um, psychologically manageable than thinking about it as an essay because essays are scary as we all know. Secondly, let's talk about scoring. Section 3 is marked, uh, so you get a number out of 5, like 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, or like a 0.5 in the middle of that, and you get a grade, so A, B, C, D, or E. The number is basically the content of your essay, and then you have a letter. The letter is the grammatical, spelling, punctuation, that kind of stuff. Most people get an A for grammar, some people get a B, um, a very small minority get a C, and if you want a D or an E, you really have to try hard to actively screw things up, because it really is quite hard to get a D or an E for grammar. Your essay is marked by two examiners, and these examiners tend to be graduate students at Cambridge. Um, each year we get the email from the admissions testing service saying, would you like to mark BMAT essays? And you get paid like, I don't know, 18 pounds an hour for it. Your essay is marked by two of these examiners, and the mark that they give you is averaged out. But if there's any significant discrepancy in marks between two examiners, like one gives you a 5A and one gives you a 2D, then the senior examiner marks it, and that kind of adds some element of of safety to this otherwise fairly subjective task of marking a BMAT essay. So what's a good score? Uh, three is pretty pretty reasonable, four and five are pretty good. Um, most people get an A or a B for the grammar thing. So I mean, from what I understand, most universities use a cutoff of maybe about 2.5 C. So as long as you get a three C or above, then you're pretty fine. And actually to get a three, all you really have to do is answer the question. Uh, provided you've answered the question, chances are you will get at least a three. And then if you use like nice language and explain your points nicely, that's what gets you into the fours and the fives. So we've talked about space, you don't have much of it, and we've talked about scoring. Let's now talk about tactics on how to prepare for section three. In section three, you get half an hour and you have to write one of four possible essay titles. One of those titles is usually like a medic-y kind of question. Um, like it might be, should we uh, offer treatment to obese people under the NHS? Or it might be something about euthanasia or something about abortion. Um, the second one is usually some kind of vet question. So. I can't remember, but I think like cat euthanasia or like cruelty to animals, you know, that, that kind of thing. The third one is usually some kind of current affairs topic. So in my year, I think it was about freedom and liberties. Um, and I think one year there was something about education policies and stuff like that. And the fourth one is usually some kind of quote by Nietzsche or Aristotle or Socrates or someone famous. And you have to interpret the quote and kind of answer the sub questions associated with it. I'll put a few examples of questions up on the screen, but as you can see, you've got a main question or a main statement, and then you have three or four, sometimes two little sub questions. Provided you answer all of the sub questions, you will almost certainly get at least a three out of five. If you fail to address any of the sub questions, the highest mark they can give you is a two. So the one sure way of completely destroying your section three paper is by not answering one of the questions. So please don't do that. Please make sure that you answer every single aspect of the question that you've chosen. Okay, so how do you choose the question? This is also an interesting topic. We always recommend that you spend at least two or three minutes actively deciding which question to do. It's very easy in the heat of the exam. You know, it's you've just done section two. Section two is super, super time pressured. You're really sad after section two and you think, oh crap, I didn't have any time in section two. Therefore I need to rush into section three. Please don't do this. Section three is not very time pressured at all. You've got half an hour, and in fact, it only takes about 10, 15 minutes to write in that box. More on that later. So it's really important that you choose your question wisely. What I would recommend is that actively go through each of the essay titles and just kind of think in your head, right, what points do I have to address each of these sub, sub points? And then obviously pick the one that you have the most things to say for. In terms of choosing a question, there is no benefit to choosing a weird question over a normal question. So, I mean, some some people that I've, I've spoken to over the past few years seem to think that, oh, if I choose the weird quote by Aristotle, then the examiners will 
look at me more favorably because everyone's going to be answering the question about medical ethics, but no one's going to be answering that question. Completely ignore that type of thinking. Just pick the question that you think you can answer best. The examiners don't care which one you answer, and it's much better for you if you answer the easier question and get the marks on it than if you try and tackle the more difficult question um, just because it seems more difficult. So at this point, we're about two minutes into our section three paper. We've got 28 minutes to go and we've decided what question we're going to do. The next step of section three is to really plan our essay very well. And what I was doing, I spent about 15 minutes planning my essay. Um, planning is by far the most important part of section three. What you want to do is you want to plan the essay to the point where you know exactly what you're going to write when you finally put pen to paper. And, it's n and you're not like making stuff up as you go along. The reason for this is that you only really have one shot at that section three answer sheet. Um, I'm not sure if the rules have changed in, in, in recent times, but previously they were only ever allowed to give you one sheet. And if you screwed up that sheet, then that was the end of it. So what we always say is treat this answer sheet as if it's sacred, don't touch it at all until you've already planned your essay in advance and you know exactly what you're going to write. So in terms of the planning stage, um, we recommend splitting it up into two parts. Number one is the brain dump phase and number two is the organization phase. So the brain dump phase is where you like, I mean, let's say the essay title is um, obese people shouldn't be treated under the NHS because it's a self-inflicted condition, something like that. The subsections might be explain a reason for, explain a reason against and give your own thoughts. So we can split up our paper nicely into three sections. We've got for, we've got against and we've got the conclusion. So in the brain dump phase, I would just be writing as many points as I could possibly think of for the for, for the against and kind of work out what conclusion I want to go from here. And while writing these points down, I might expand on some of them. So I might say, oh, we've got limited resources in the NHS. And if I remembered the budget of the NHS, I might say the budget of the NHS is around 110 billion, but this isn't enough because I don't know, uh, cancer, drugs are not being funded, a and E's are being closed down, that sort of thing. So the point I would be making is that we have limited resources, but then I'd be kind of expanding on it with maybe one or two extra bits of, bits of information. And that would turn it from like maybe a three essay into a four essay for example. So this is our brain dump, we just write as many points as we can. And then in our organization phase, which took, should take a few minutes, we pretty much pick one or two points from each section that we're gonna go with. We physically don't have the space to write any more than that. And an essay like, we shouldn't treat obese people under the NHS, is a really, really long essay, and I'm sure you'd love to write loads and loads about it, but you only have these three or four paragraphs. So you've gotta pick your best points and think about how they're gonna flow together. So for this essay, for example, um, I might be like, okay, my introduction is gonna be this. After the introduction, I'm gonna say, one reason in favor of not treating obese people is that obesity is often regarded as a self-inflicted condition. Given the limited resources of the NHS, it seems unfair to use funds for the treatment of a self-inflicted condition when those funds could instead be used to fund cancer treatment or to fund genetic pediatric cases, things like that. And then when arguing against this, I might say that others would argue that obese people have an equal right to treatment under the NHS as anyone else does because they pay taxes and because the NHS was founded on the principle of free healthcare at the point of need. If I had space, I might do one more of each and then I'd conclude by saying, in conclusion, I believe that dot dot dot. And I would have this kind of in my head and ideally on paper during my organization phase of the planning. So at this point, we still haven't put pen to paper. We still haven't written anything on our answer sheets. We're just kind of actively very, very detailed planning our essay because we've got loads of time. So that's the planning phase of section three. Now comes the writing phase. And in the writing phase, you've got to put pen to paper and write in really small, really neat handwriting on this answer page. The smaller you write, pretty much the better it is because you can put more points in and that can get you, get you more marks. If you write very untidily, that's bad because the examiners might not want to read it and might not be able to read it. And you just want to really make an effort to try writing as neatly as possible. If you're the type of person whose handwriting is atrocious, then give yourself a bit more time for the writing spend a, bit, a little bit less time on the planning because the neater you can make your handwriting, the better it'll be for you. One thing I always recommend for people preparing for section three um, is that you should practice one, two or three timed essays in advance, like obviously before the exam, and you should print off that answer grid that's on the BMAT, on the official BMAT website, I'll put a link down below. Um, and when you print that off, you'll be able to see exactly how much space you've got to write in. So when you do these timed essays, you write it on that piece of paper and you time how long it takes you personally to write really small, really neat, and to fill that gap, fill that space. So when I was doing it, I timed it took me about 12, 13 minutes to write really small, really neat in that space. So that means I could have 15 minutes for planning, two minutes for choosing the question, and maybe some time left over at the end for checking if I was a bit quick on the writing front. So yeah, what you guys should do when preparing for section three, do a couple of timed essays, time how long it takes you to write in that box, and use that time to work out how much time you've got available for planning, for checking, and for choosing a question. And in the exam, by the time you get to the writing stage, you've pretty much already planned out your essay. You know exactly what you're going to write, so you're not gonna have any problems 
hopefully with writing the essay. Finally, at the end, it's vaguely useful to check through the essay, make sure you've got everything um, sorted, make sure you haven't accidentally put a not in, in your conclusion, which would completely change the meaning of your essay. Um, however, we do want to be avoiding doing the whole crossing and asterisks and that arrows and that kind of thing. Um, you also can't write please turn over and write on the back because it's only the front of the sheet that gets scanned. Um, and it's just not very nice for examiners to have to kind of interpret scrawlings and asterisks and stuff. So if you can avoid it, then that would be ideal. But of course, if you're in danger of not answering the question, like if you've got to the end of the essay and you're like, oh crap, I haven't written my conclusion and that was one of the things that was being asked, then yes, of course, you need to do whatever it takes to get that conclusion in there. Because if you don't have a conclusion and the question asked you to write a conclusion, then you're gonna get two out of five and we wouldn't want that. So yeah, in your checking phase, just make sure everything is, everything is in order and above all, make sure you've answered the question because that's the most important thing. And actually, if you only take away one thing from this video, it's that please answer the question. If it has three subsections that you have to address, please address those three subsections. If you do that and write reasonably reasonable English, then you will get at least three out of five and that will get you over the cutoff point for any university. So at this point, if you're still with us, we've talked about space, which you don't have much of. We've talked about scoring. I've explained how the scoring system works. And I've kind of given a walkthrough of how I would approach a section three paper from picking a question to doing the brain dump to doing the organization phase where I decide what I'm going to write to actually writing it and then checking at the end just to make sure everything is fine. Now let's talk about things that you should do to prepare for section three. I've had a few emails over the last few weeks of people asking what books you'd recommend for section three, whether you should read a short introduction to medical ethics, whether you should keep up to date with BBC Health and Guardian and stuff to get some more points for section three. And what I would say to all that is that it really doesn't matter what you read for section three. Obviously, when you're applying to medicine, it's useful to be, you know, vaguely up to date with what's going on in the healthcare industry. Um, you know, rereading Guardian or BBC Health, anything like that. The New Scientist is quite good. I quite like the student BMJ. But I don't think there's much to be gained from actively reading stuff in preparation for section three. Because to be honest, by the time section three comes around, and by the time most people start preparing for the BMAT, they've only really got a month or two until, until the exam and there is only so much your essay writing skills can improve in a month or two. I've marked quite a lot of BMAT essays over the last five years just from teaching the courses and people sending them into us. And what makes a good essay is not that they've introduced some rogue point that they got from a treatise about medical ethics. It's just that they've stated the basic points a bit more nicely than other people have. So honestly, I don't think there's that much to be gained from actively reading about medical ethics and things in preparation for section three. But of course, I mean, if you're interested, you should be doing it anyway. And in preparation for interviews, it's always good to have more knowledge uh, in your bank. How else can you prepare for section three? Um, people sometimes ask, how many essays should I be doing? Should I be practicing one timed essay each day? All that kind of stuff. And I would say that's probably a bit overkill. In terms of actual timed essays, you only really need to do two or three to get an idea of what your timings are like. And then the rest of them, if you really feel like you'd struggle with section three, then I would recommend just going through the past papers and just planning the essays out. That's what we do uh, here at Cambridge when we have essays to write. Um, most of us don't bother writing out the whole essay when revising for exams. We just kind of think about it and plan the essay out because we know that if that came up in the exam, we'd be able to write it, if that makes sense. So planning is far quicker than actually writing is. Writing just gets really boring and really annoying. So do a few essays, actually timed and writing it down just so you have an idea of what the timings are like. But don't worry too much about doing reams and reams of timed essays, because I don't think that's going to be particularly helpful. Instead, if you just plan the essays, you'll get all of the benefit from it. So yeah, I think that's everything I have to say about section three. Honestly, in my opinion, it's the easiest part of the BMAT, but it's the part that a lot of people worry about because they're worried that they haven't done an essay subject at A-level or anything like that. You don't need to have done an essay subject at A-level to write three or four paragraphs about about any kind of topic really. You just need to answer the question, try and put your points across clearly. Uh, if you do that, you'll get at least three out of five. And then anything above that is just kind of showing off with nice language and good sentence structure and that kind of thing. So thank you very much for watching. Just to recap again, we've talked about space, we've talked about scoring, and we've talked about how to approach the essay uh, one section at a time. So the planning, the organization, the writing phase. I've given you some thoughts on how I would prepare for section three if I were taking the BMAT this year, i.e. I would just write a few timed essays to get the timing right. And then I would just maybe practice a few essay plans, um, but even that might be a bit overkill. So yeah, I think that's everything I have to say about section three. I think we'll do another video either today or tomorrow talking about how to come up with points, how in depth your examples need to be, whether you're allowed to make facts up, that kind of thing. So we'll do another video on that. But in the meantime, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you haven't seen the rest of the videos in the BMAT tip series, I suggest you do. I'll also put a link to a video I did with my friend Chidera. It's like a 20 minute long conversation between the two of us where we talk about how we prepared for the BMAT and just kind of give you some more tips for it. So I'll put a link to that down below. 
Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.